I'm here to welcome you to Gibbs Road. Uh, my name is Alicia and I've been here for about 10 years. I've grown plants here, I've worked with volunteers here, I've helped new farmers learn skills here, I've helped people shop at market, grow transplants. Um, I've probably even talked to some of you here before. I wanted to welcome you back here for farm camp and tell you a little bit about the big picture of Gibbs Road, what we've done, why we do it, what we hope for the future, and really invite you to see where you might belong. Okay, so uh, to start with, uh, I'm sitting here in the South 50. Um, see the, high, the highway behind us, uh, 635. It gets louder and louder every year. And so all that noise in the background is the highway. It's really hard to hear sometimes here, but we also, uh, identify to the highway. It's part of this place. It's part of this place like the cell tower is, like the chickens are now, like you are, like Rocco the cat, like Sharon the farmer and Melinda. Um, everybody who comes here and spends a little bit of time drops something here. Drops a footprint, drops a speck of, or a ball of sweat. Some people bleed here. We hope people laugh here and learn here share ideas here um, and so that's a lot of the magic about Gibbs Road is that um, the farm's been here for so long uh, we count back 30 years we know the people who were here 30 years ago and it's a place of gathering people gather here they've come here to buy food to learn skills to get transplants some people come and they don't really even know why they're here. Um, uh, and somehow we all find our way. Um, some places are magic like that. Some places um, are made magical by the people who come. So, um, a little bit about Gibbs Road. I came here in 2009 to be the farmer here. And back then, there was a lot of food growing. We had six high tunnels. I don't know if you know what a high tunnel is. It's a unheated greenhouse, heated by the sun. Farmers use them for season extension. And so we were able to keep food going inside the high tunnels all year long. We had six of them. Um, we grew a lot of food. We took it to the Brookside Farmer's Market. We sold a lot of food there. We brought up 40 young farmers along the way. And they're scattered around the city and beyond now doing their own thing. Some are working for the USDA, some are working for other nonprofits, some have their own farms, some are in graduate school, some are parents, some are, one's a chiropractor, one's farming in Australia, one's farming in Belgium, all kinds of things. I think that's one thing we learned here at Gibbs Road too is that um, so much so much is beyond our control, but then at the same time, what happens so much is up to us. And that's part of farming, right? To learn that you can live in between these two truths. You can live between having no control at all and needing to surrender and understanding how powerful every day is, the possibility of every day. And it's something that you learn here. You learn the seasons and you learn, um, possibility. So I'm sitting here in the South 50. Um, the South 50 is a southern edge of the farm. So it's along the tree line and it's the southern 50 feet all the way from 42nd Street west to 635. So we call it the South 50. It's the 50 southernmost 50 feet of the farm. Um, we took it out of annual production and so now we have some berms and swales to capture some water and let water seep into the soil. Uh, those berms and swales are covered with native plants. So we are growing native plants here. We have these big old logs back behind my right shoulder uh, just for playing on. Um, we have a bunch of leaves that our friend uh, John Beaver and his crew brought to us. Uh, we use the leaves to mulch everything and to make pads. We have an area over here, a gourd tunnel that we will get planted with all kind of vining things. 
there's a path through the whole South 50. There's a corn maze and some raspberries growing. There's just wildlife, a meadow, um, some hazelnut trees and pussy willow. They have aronia berries growing here and some elderberries. The idea with the South 50 is to embrace uh, the natural world and not think that we are separate from it, to understand that we're not separate from it, understand that we're not above it, and really to accept the idea that it's not ours to change and mold to fit our needs. Back in those days when I was harvesting for market and we had all those high tunnels and pushing production so hard, you know, um, that was part of my life and that was part of the, that is part of the history of the farm and I'm proud of what we did then, um, but it was, we did it enough. Um, when we started this organization, when we came and decided to try it again here and start Casey Farm School, we wanted to embrace the wonder of the farm. So instead of um, cutting down or being angry at these big trees um, for the shade they cast, we are grateful for the shade they cast. I'm sitting at a picnic table here in their shade. Uh, we walk into the farm through, through the sun and when we arrive to the South 50, we're greeted by the shade and it's a relief. Um, as the South 50 is a place of reflection, of wonder, of exploration, of learning, of being. It's a, a nice spot in the middle of this busy place to have some time on our own, and to have some time to consider what's next. So South 50, it's a new part of the farm. It's a still building part of the farm. Uh, there's plenty of work here. If you're interested in learning more about the South 50, we can find ways to help you do that. Uh, if you're interested in helping us continue to develop the South 50, to take care of the South 50, we can, we can um, help you do that as well. So when you come to Gibbs and when you come for a farm tour or adopt a row, uh, make sure you check out the South 50, um, listen to the birds. You can still hear the highway, um, but you can definitely hear the birds. Okay, here I am uh, sitting in a bed of bush cherries. If you look, you can see a couple of ripe ones right behind me. Um, um, on this side, a bunch of potatoes growing. And I'll turn the camera, the greenhouse, um, shallots and garlic, and then some snow peas behind that. So, bush cherries. So, our beds are laid out from the north to the south. So long straight beds, rows, um, that are about four feet wide and the paths are three or four feet wide. So it's comfortable for people to walk up and down. Um, when a couple of years ago, when we decided to redraw the farm and see what it would look like, we, want, we knew that the paths should stay pretty much north-south. The soil had already been amend, amended and it was beautiful soil. We just uh, wanted to see how we could make this all a little bit more regenerative. So sustainable, good, regenerative. The term is a little bit new. It's a little bit different. It means a little bit more than sustainable. We know that as things are right now, not quite good enough. Uh, we've gone down a path where we're pretty sure if it continues or even if it just stays the same, we it might not support life very much longer, right? Um, we kind of accept that and move on, right? Accept that and okay, where's the action here? Where's the action towards solution? And so as we're rethinking the farm, we know some things. We know that water has always flowed from the east to the west, from the northeast to the southwest. So that's one of the reasons we put the South 50 um, out of production so that it could hold water and let the water slow seep in and then s spread. And then every 50 feet, we put a perennial bed here um, throughout the field. And so these bush cherries are um, a perennial bed pretty much in the midfield. We have a bed of herbs 
and an orchard that you'll walk through. It's kind of the gateway into the farm. Uh, we have a bed of blackberries. We have three beds of asparagus and we're thinking about a few more. We have an aroni berry, aronia berry bed and we're also putting in some lavender and rhubarb later this spring, maybe this week. Uh, and so the idea of putting these uh, permanent beds within the annual food production um, stops the movement of water. Therefore, it stops the movement of soil, stops the movement of nutrients. It holds the soil in place. Uh, you know, the more you learn about soil, you'll learn that all life comes from soil and goes to soil. It's central to everything we do. Oh, I'm gonna stop for a minute because something magical is happening right now. I'm gonna turn this around. We have a bumblebee. Oh, she just left. She was checking out this veg. So interestingly enough, this purple veg, hairy veg, was grown here as a cover crop. And a cover crop is another reason or another way we take care of the soil. We grow annuals. Annuals are vegetables that grow from seed to harvest in one year. Um, and it takes a lot out of the soil. Can you imagine what it takes out of the soil to grow one of those eight foot tall tomato plants that put on dozens and dozens of tomatoes? Or beets, when you pull beets out of the ground, what nutrients you're taking out of the ground inside that beet. And so a way that farmers are able to regenerate the soil is with cover crops. Some are overwintered cover crops like the vetch we just saw. Um, you see that in the fall and it grows a little bit, but then it really takes off in the spring and flowers in the spring. Provides food for the native bees that are here and also for the honeybees that we keep here. Uh, there are summer cover crops. Um, buckwheat is a really popular one right now that people are really excited about growing. Uh, the farmer that I learned from, his name is Mark Trella, and he would tell me, if you don't know what to plant, plant buckwheat. Because um, by the time you figure out what you're planting, you'll be ready to mow it down and work it in. It goes from seed to flower in 30 days. And so, um, believe it or not, sometimes it takes 30 days to figure out uh, what you're doing next, especially when it's 100 degrees in August and it's been 100 degrees for a month or so. So, um, planting cover crop feeds the soil, it holds the soil in place, it feeds the bees. Um, their flowers are beautiful. Um, and then there are a dozen other cover crops people, farmers use, winter rye, oats, snow peas, winter peas. Uh, some farmers use sunflowers or sun hemp, sorghum sedan grass, all kinds of things to learn. So I guess that's the, that's a point too of farm camp um, and of this farm of life, right? Uh, you tend to get out what you put in. So if you want to um, join us for yoga in the morning and journal a little bit in the afternoon and take care of your garden, I think you'll have a fine time at farm camp. If you want to come to the farm and learn everything that's happening here, good luck, but I think you'll have a great time at farm camp. If you want to take an idea that you get here and expand it and make it your own and grow it into something new, then farm camp is really going to serve you well. It's like life. You got to show up. There's our honeybees. Two hives. How many queens you think are in those hives? It's a trick question. There's one queen in each hive. It's a fascinating story. One queen and thousands of workers. Amazing right? So, Casey Farm School at Gibbs Road. This is an amazing place that we're excited to share with you. We're excited to think that you want to learn more about farming, um, maybe about honeybees, making seed, growing tomatoes, maybe about herbs, maybe about cooking. Maybe you're not quite sure what it is that you want to look, look at and learn here. Maybe you're just coming because someone's someone thinks it's a good idea well whatever the reason that you come here doesn't really matter I want to thank you for showing up uh, thank you for participating when you're here 
Um, and I, I can make a promise that um, you're gonna go away a little bit different. You'll have experiences here that stretch you, push you, push you to be stronger, get you hot and dirty and maybe even, you know, frustrated. It's a great place for all of that. We've all been there. It's a great place for learning and for just being human. It's a place where just being human is allowed. Just being human is the best thing you can be here. So show up, be human, maybe have some fun. Um, and let me know. I'd really love to hear about your farm experience.